Who's your commander? Good luck. Equipped. Move to combat. Resolves. Right. Now, before you attack Does me. anyone have an answer? Well played. Good game. Hello everyone, DJ here with the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel, and I have a Rakdos discard deck for you featuring an Elder Giant. Let's take a look at Croxa, Titan of Death's Hunger. Croxa is black and a red for a 6-6 legendary Elder Giant. When Croxa enters the battlefield, sacrifice it unless it escaped. Whenever Croxa enters the battlefield or attacks, each opponent discards a card, then each opponent who didn't discard a non-land card this way loses three life. Croxa escapes for black, black, red, red. Exile five other cards from your graveyard, and then that lets you cast Croxa from your graveyard. So command zone to the battlefield has a trigger. You can choose to put it into the graveyard, then you can escape it from the graveyard again to get that trigger again. And then finally you're attacking for that attack trigger. Wow. <laughs> the main thing to know about Croxa is there's a lot of value. Just having a discard outlet and some damage straight out of your command zone for two mana is a lot of utility when you're playing a multiplayer game. Of course, we're gonna embrace the discard strategy because it's super duper fun. I mean, Nekusar has been a really popular discard and draw general, but Croxa can really focus in on just the discard and make for a really exciting deck. One thing that we want to do when we're attacking our opponent's hands is to tax them, both taxing their life total and their resources that they have available. That makes discarding actually relevant to the board, because if you just get rid of one card, yeah, whatever, it doesn't really disrupt their game plan. Many different decks can just power through that. But if you tax, it gives you more opportunities to strand stuff in their hand, and then they're discarding more and more relevant spells. Finally, if they're discarding, I don't know, that eight drop that they're not gonna be able to cast for a couple turns, we might want to reanimate it. So there's a little reanimation package in here. And then finally, if we're stalling out the game and denying them cards, we need ways for us to pull ahead, especially if a lot of that discard is universal. We wanna be able to break that symmetry. So the first thing we wanna talk about is discard because this is a discard deck. One thing that's pretty important about discard is that we don't actually want a ton of it. I know that seems a little bit counterintuitive, but when we have discard in our command zone, we kind of always have access to that discard. So when we are playing discard spells, we want to make sure that they're, well, really, really good. Siphon Mind hits everyone, but it's also a draw spell for you. Uh, but if everyone's empty handed in the late game, it doesn't actually draw you any cards. Hmm. Fell Spectre is a discard card, but it also punishes. We're gonna talk about all the payoffs for discard in a little bit later. And then Rankle Master of Pranks, discard, but also draw and also a sacrifice outlet. So very cool and flexible discard. Finally, I think the best discard that we have is actually wheel effects, which is a shame because this is where the deck gets really expensive. Wheel of Fortune has everyone discarding their whole hand. Yeah, they're gonna draw seven new cards, but you are as well. You're allowed to refill your own hand. The problem is that this is like a hundred bucks. And I don't know if it is necessary in this deck, but it certainly works really well, especially when we look at all those discard payoffs. A cheaper version can be found with Reforge the Soul, but paying five mana for this spell means that you can't redeploy many of your newly gotten cards before your opponent, because you might be pinched on mana. And then finally, Memory Jar. This is another one that's, uh, I mean, it's not cheap, it's on the reserve list, but ultimately you can deploy this and then crack it when it's appropriate for you. But if we're gonna be having our opponents drawing cards and discarding cards, how are we gonna get value out of these discard effects? We need to turn the discard into damage, something that will actually win the game. So cards like Liliana's Cress, Megrim, and Raider's Wake will damage our opponents for every card they discard. Sangromancer will gain us life for every card they discard, and Geth's Grimmar will have us drawing a card every time someone discards. This is a powerhouse in the deck. I can make you discard all over the place. It's gonna be awesome if I'm drawing cards as well. That Siphon Mind becomes insane. 
There are other cards that will trigger at different times. It's something you're gonna have to pay attention to is, well, what triggers when I draw a card? What triggers when I discard a card? What triggers when they discard a card or ends up blah, 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 all that stuff, okay? So Blood Chief Ascension, when it becomes active, whenever a card is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, that means if they discard it, trigger. If it goes from the battlefield to the graveyard, trigger. If you mill them, trigger. Blood Chief Ascension is crazy good, and I love that it loses them two life, but you gain two life too. Remember, this is a grindy deck, and so the ability to gain some life with that Syngromancer or that Blood Chief Ascension could be the difference in a game. Finally, Sir Conrad the Grim. Whenever another creature dies, or a creature card is put into a graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield, you get to deal one damage to each opponent. I like that, that one player discards a creature and then suddenly it deals damage to everyone. That means mass discard could have Sir Conrad the Grim dealing lots of damage to every single opponent. And the built-in mill can be really relevant in this deck too. Now here's some effects that trigger when we discard. So this works with the wheels, but not so much with the targeted discard. Archfiend of Ifnir, put in minus one, minus one counter on each creature your opponents control. Glinthorn Buccaneer, we're gonna get to deal one damage to each opponent for each card we discard. Also has a cool discard outlet on there. And then Faith of the Devoted. The reason why I'm a little bit on the fence about including this is because you have to pay mana for this to work. And I don't necessarily like that. I like draining my opponents a lot, but if I'm already paying, you know, five mana for a memory jar and activating it, I'm not gonna have the ability to activate Faith of the Devoted five times in that same turn as well. It is a pretty powerful effect though, so it could be a budget version for some of these other cards. Let's talk about a few powerful discard enchantments. Words of Waste, two and a black for an enchantment. You can pay one, and the next time you would draw a card this turn, each opponent discards a card from his or her hand instead. Wow, Words of Waste combos with a few cards in this deck to just drain your opponents out of cards. It's super duper good. But honestly, if you are looking for ways to make your opponents discard, sacrificing your own card draw could be really good. And so even though giving up your draw step seems like a big cost, and it is, it might be worth it sometimes in this deck. Painful Quandary is a truly painful quandary. Three black black for an enchantment. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, that player loses five life unless he or she discards a card. This can sometimes lock your opponents out. In the early game, they're gonna take five life, take five life, and then the cards like Megrim and Liliana's Cress will start really adding up. You know, those little two points of damage, two points of damage will actually start pressuring them when you have cards like Painful Quandary really punishing them for playing cards. Then we have huge payoff cards like Waste Knot and Bone Miser. Whenever your opponent discards a creature card with Waste Knot, you get a 2-2 zombie. Whenever you discard a creature card with Bone Miser, you get a 2-2 zombie. Same thing goes with lands, you get two black mana, and non-creature, non-land cards, you get to draw a card. So these are powerful effects, and some of them work when you make your opponents discard, and some of them work when you discard a card, no matter what in this deck with cycling and wheels and discard, you're going to be getting value out of these two engines. One of the best things about this deck is how versatile its mana base is. Castle Lockwang can have you drawing cards even when your hand is empty. Gyre Reach Sanitarium can let you loot, but more importantly, it forces a discard from all of your opponents. And this can happen at instant speed too, so you can punish your opponents while they're in their turns, while they're in their draw step. Pretty cool. Rick's Mahdi Dungeon Palace, you have to activate this on your turn, but it just makes everyone discard a card. It's exactly what you want in this deck, with very little downside. And Sanctum of Eternity is really sneaky with your commander. Let's read this card. It's a land that comes in a battlefield untapped and adds a colorless. Thumbs up, doesn't slow you down. Two in a tap, return target commander you own from the battlefield to your hand. Activate this ability only during your turn. So this can't save your commander during your opponent's turn, oh, shucks. But one of the big keys is that just because it's in your turn doesn't mean that this card isn't at instant speed. You can cast your commander from the command zone and then before it's sacrificed, bounce it to your hand so you can play it again later. Finally, our mana base is filled with discard outlets. Canyon Slough is just one of them, but we've got a lot of cycling lands in here and we're running Tectonic Reformation so we can cycle any land in the deck. 
Now, we've laid out tons of ways to discard our own cards, discard our opponent's cards, refill on cards, all of this stuff, and some of the great benefits we're going to get out of it. Life, and damage, and draining, and zombies, and cards, and mana, all that stuff, all centered around discarding and drawing. But, you know, sometimes we want to take advantage of what's being discarded. I like the value that Ox of Agonis gets. We can play it from our graveyard, it lets us draw some cards. Sometimes we might need some card draw in this deck, because uh, we might end up empty-handed. Squee Goblin Nabob will never end up empty-handed if we have Squee, because he always comes back to our hand for discard fodder. And Palace Siege. We can play this to get creatures back over and over and over again, and we have some really strong creatures that can tax our opponents. But more importantly, in the late game, we can play this and start draining our opponents out, because remember, we are a deck that sort of grinds people one damage, two damage at a time, and Palace Siege can help with that grind. Let's also plan to reanimate some cards. Animate Dead, Necromancy, and Dance of the Dead, all of these are efficient spells that can hit your opponent's creatures. Next, we have Command the Dreadhorde, the Eldest Reborn, and Chainer Nightmare Adept. Command the Dreadhorde is a huge swing, and it can hit everyone's graveyard. So you can get up to six mana, and suddenly all those great spells that your opponents have discarded are now fighting on your side of the battlefield. I also like the Eldest Reborn because it is a discard outlet along with a reanimation effect does everything. So amazing. Uh, Chainer might not be used to its fullest extent in this deck, but it is still pretty strong. Same thing goes with cards like Yawgmoth's Will and Underworld Breach. These are not used to their highest power level, where you could be storming off with them or doing crazy powerful things, so don't feel like you have to spend the money on these cards, because they are kind of expensive. But if we are trying to build in value in this deck and have it grind out, having access to our graveyard in red and black could be really strong, so I've included them here for a second. Next, it's time to win. I've laid out a few different ways to win, draining your opponent out slowly, having the game grind to a halt, but you've reanimated some big creature. But a lot of times in these decks, I like to have some sort of combo outlet, just a way to win the game, kinda out of nowhere. And so that's why I've included the World Gorger Dragon combo. The combo goes like this, World Gorger Dragon in your graveyard, when you reanimate it with a card like Animate Dead, Necromancy, and Dance of the Dead, Oh my gosh, these are cards I already mentioned that synergize in this deck. Whew. Anyways, when they enchant World Gorger Dragon, they bring it onto the battlefield, and World Gorger Dragon says, up, oh, get rid of that silly enchantment and everything else on your side of the battlefield. And then when that enchantment goes away, your World Gorger Dragon is like, whoop, I gotta go back to the graveyard. And then it brings back your enchantment like Animate Dead, which can pull your dragon back out of the graveyard, and the loop has begun. You can float a ton of mana as things blink in and out and in and out, and then at the end of this, eh, you let World Gorger Dragon go to the graveyard, but what do you do with infinite mana? Well, you can play all sorts of stuff, but one of the best things about this deck is that with infinite mana, your commander just wins the game, because you can automatically pay the command tax, so you cast Croxa, people have to discard a card, and if they can't, then they take three damage. And by the way, you have to sacrifice your commander. And so you can choose not to send it to the graveyard, but back to the command zone again because it was not escaped. So you basically just keep playing your commander over and over and over and over again with all that infinite mana. And as your opponents run out of cards they can discard, they start taking three damage every time. And you have successfully won the game. And what's great about this combo is that it is so low maintenance. I have included one dragon to make this combo work. Your commander's in the command zone. All of these reanimate effects are still really strong and I would run them anyways, but World Gorger Dragon just sits there and makes your deck that much more resilient. So, what is the play pattern of this deck? Well, it is grindy. What do we do? Well, we start deploying some of our value engines, like Liliana's Caress, or that Sangromancer, or that Geth's Grimoire. And then we start making our opponents discard our cards. We always have access to discard in our command zone with Croxa. In fact, I wouldn't play Croxa on two. I would make sure to have some sort of cool benefit already on the battlefield and then play Croxa. And then you immediately get that value and Crox is in the graveyard. And then you have access to being able to escape Croxa and get that value again. 
we know that we have tons of different discard outlets in this deck and ways to punish our opponents for drawing too much and ways to refill our own hand with wheel effects. This deck is resilient because we can play stuff out of the graveyard and play stuff out of our opponent's graveyard. This deck is grindy, but if your opponents don't respect it, you can just win out of nowhere. I want to thank Cool Stuff Inc. There's cool stuff on their website every single day, and if you use the coupon code JUMBO5, you can get 5% off your order. I also want to thank my patrons. They are amazing. They are fantastic, and I am so grateful for their support so that I can make content. Thank you, patrons. And thank you for watching this video. I hope to see you all really soon. Bye-bye.